All right, continuing in this lesson, we're still factoring. Now we're going to factor quadratic trinomials when a is greater than 1, not when a is equal to 1. So again, here's a quadratic trinomial. Trinomial means three terms, quadratic highest degree is 2. Our example is to factor 2x squared plus x minus 6. So over here, we've um, recorded that a is 2, b is 1, and c is negative 6. So now that a is not equal to 1, it's not the easy case. And, but we're actually going to use some of the skills we, we learned in the easy case, and we're going to involve factor by grouping as well. So for this particular situation, when a is greater than 1, we're going to, um, we're going to still multiply a times c. And then after we multiply 2 times negative 6, getting negative 12, uh, then we need to find factors of that product, negative 12, that add up to b. So still the factor sum chart. So we need um, the product AC, and we need factors of negative 12, and we need those factors to sum to B, which was 1. And this is B. So again, I would ignore the negative just for right now. Just start documenting and recording all the factors of 12. So um, I would record 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and that would be all your sets here. So now, looking back, I have to get a negative product so one of the two of the numbers, factors here in each set has to be um, negative. And because the sum is positive, when you go to choose one of the two factors to make negative, I would choose the smaller of the numbers because when you add then, you get a positive result. And that's what our target number is, positive 1. So I'd make 1 negative, but when you add, you get 11. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for 1. Um, on 2 and 6, choose the smaller number, so make it negative. You still multiply and get negative 12, but when you sum, you get 4, which is not what we're looking for. And then in this set of factors of 3 and 4, make the smaller number 3 negative, and when you add, you do get that positive 1 up here. So these are the numbers that we're going to use to factor by grouping now to finish this problem. It says, now that you have found the factors, we did, rewrite the term having the B coefficient as two terms and proceed with factoring by grouping. So I know I didn't leave us a lot of space here, but let me see if I can kind of get us some. All right, so now it's saying right here to rewrite the term having the B coefficient as two terms. So what I do is I look back at the original problem and I keep the first term, 2x squared, and I'm gonna keep the last term or the constant here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, um, this middle term right here, this plus 1x, I'm going to break it up into um, the sum of two terms having the, um, these coefficients, two x terms having these coefficients, meaning this. Okay, we have an extra step to, to do. We have the factoring by grouping. So let's take um, minus 3, put an x with it, and then put the positive 4x here. Okay, now just think about this for a minute. When you put these back together and combine them, you get back to the positive 1x. So we're going to take these factors and attach an x to it and write two terms instead of one term where these both would collect to the original problem anyway. And then we're going to keep the constant term. So all we did was we took the middle term and we broke it up into two terms, so that gives us four terms. And um, the last thing that we looked at was factoring by grouping where we needed four terms. Okay, so now we have to proceed to make this a multiplication problem by factoring by grouping. Nice that this is a plus here, because then I don't have to worry about making a mistake of adjusting this, this sign right here. You might be asking, okay, well, would it have been okay if I put plus 4x and minus 3x? Yeah, but think about if you were to switch these terms you're putting the minus 3x here, which means you do have to remember to make the adjustment. Either way, it's going to work. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to make the work a little bit easier and minimize some of my mistakes. So, But no matter which way you arrange these two terms, uh, at the end, we should get the same exact answer. And when I mean exact, I mean the same two parentheses. It might be that they're you know in a different order. All right, let's continue by factoring by grouping. Common factor here is not a number, but a variable x. When I factor the x out from both these terms, I'm going to get 2x here and minus 3 here. So I really want to make sure I get another 2x minus 3. If I don't, I made a mistake. Uh, common factor here is just 2, so I'll pull a 2 out, and that'll leave 2x and then a minus 3. So 
That's great because I have the same parentheses here. So now with these two new groups, the common parenthesis gets to be factored out, which means I need that multiplication, that parenthesis there for implied multiplication. When you take a 2x minus 3 out from this group, you're left with x. And when you take a 2x minus 3 out from this term, this group, you get a plus 2. All right, uh, likely if you were to have these up here switched, if you had plus 4x and minus 3x, you probably would have had x plus 2 up front. That would have been your common parenthesis. And then when you factored x plus 2 out, you would have gotten the other binomial I have here, 2x minus 3. All right, so we've got some practice problems. Notice that all these quadratic trinomials down here, uh, the coefficient, the a value uh, on x squared is greater than 1. All right, so... Uh, I'll start with factoring this one. Not sure what that little period is there. I gotta go back and fix that. Let's first of all create, first step, create a factor sum chart. All right, let's decide that A is four, oh, B is negative 19, and C is 12. So we need to multiply A times C, we'll get 48. And then we want the factors of 48 to sum to negative 19, which is our B. So 1 and 48, 2 goes into 48 24 times, 3 goes in 16 times, be sure and use your calculator, 4 goes into 48 12, 5 does not, 6 does 8 times, 7 does not go into 48, 8 does, but then I've already got that here, so that means I've got all sets of factors of 48. And next thing I check is, okay, what are going to be the signs of these numbers? Well. I need to get a positive product, 48, so either both these numbers are negative in each individual set of factors, or both these numbers are negative. So, and because I want the two numbers, the two factors to sum to negative 19, I have to go through and um, make all the factors negative. So, this product is positive 48, but that sum is negative 49. Not what I need. If both these factors were negative and I added them, I'd get negative 26. I'm getting closer to negative 19 but not what I need. <coughs> the sum here is negative 19, that's what I need. So I'm gonna stop there because the other factors, sets of factors aren't gonna give me what I need. All right, so what do I do? Well, I can't go straight to x and x and the two binomials. I'm gonna keep the first term and then I'm gonna take this middle term and break it into the sum of two terms having these coefficients. So minus 3x and minus 16x. And then don't forget the plus 12. All right, and you could have put the minus 16 first and the uh, minus 3x term last. It won't matter. Um, I was just always trying to avoid putting a, um, a subtraction sign right here because I know I'm gonna factor by grouping. So given the chance, I would always put um, a negative term first and then the positive term uh, second here, but I didn't have that opportunity because both of these uh, factors were negative. All right, let's factor by grouping. Remember, you gotta have the minus and you're gonna do a parenthesis, but you just made six, negative 16x positive, so you've gotta make this plus 12 and minus 12. Remember, you can always check by distributing that negative one in to make sure you get back to what you started with. Common factor, bring down the minus. It's not a multiplication problem yet. Common factor here is four. Double check, yep, same parentheses in each of these two terms. So out comes the common factor, that quantity, and then I'm left with x and then minus four. Let's factor this quadratic trinomial. Let's make it a multiplication problem. I need a factor sum chart. Um, A times C is negative 80, and I have to sum to 11. 
All right, let's just start populating this column here. So factors of 80 are, remember, I'm going to ignore the negative for right now. I just want to find factors of 80. Six doesn't go in, seven doesn't, eight does 10 times. Nine doesn't go in, 10 doesn't. I'm going to start repeating my sets. Okay, look back. I need a negative answer when I multiply these two together. So I need one of the two of the um, factors to be negative but the smaller of the two that I'm going to choose must be the negative because um, I want the bigger number to add and give me a positive number here. So if I made this factor the negative and I added, I'm going to get 79, too far away from 11. Make the two negative, that's 38, too far away from 11, but getting closer. Make the four negative, so when you multiply you get negative 80, but when you sum you get 16. That's 5, this is 11. So we found the set of factors that we need as coefficients on the x term. So keep the first term. I'm going to put minus 5x and then plus 16x here. Don't forget your x's. Sometimes that's a common mistake. And then uh, I need the minus 40. So I've just made four terms, which means factor by grouping. Notice I got a plus here, so there's no sign change that needs to take place within this quantity. Continue factoring. I'm looking for a 2x minus 5, and hopefully that'll work. 16 does not go into 40. 8 does go into both of them, so I'm going to factor at an 8. That'll leave me 2x minus 5, and uh, success there. So I'm going to factor out the 2x minus 5. You can check by foiling, and if you clean it all up, you should get back to the original problem. looking at this trinomial here and thinking about this next problem that we're going to do over here, I, we should have already always started with uh, the original problem looking for a, a greatest common factor. That's never come up. I mean, what I mean is look at 2, look at 1, and look at negative 6. Do I have a greatest common factor I can take out of all three of these terms? No, I didn't. So um, it wasn't mentioned there. Um, but it's probably good to mention now, um, do 4, negative 19, and 12 have a common factor that I could divide out up front before I actually start doing this work? No, it doesn't. And neither does uh, this trinomial have a, a GCF that you can take out first before you jump into to this strategy. Same thing here with 5, negative 10, and 6. There's not a GCF that you can pull out, so we want to go right to the factor sum chart. I'm getting ready for this problem. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put the A, B, and C values down here. All right, A times C is 30. Factors of 30 that sum to negative 10. All right, factors of 30. Five goes in six times, and then it starts to repeat. All right, so two numbers that multiply and give me 30 have to add to a negative 10. So that means both of these factors have to be negative to multiply and give me positive 30. But when I add them, I get a negative number. So that's negative 31, too far away. Make both these factors negative to produce positive 30. But when you sum them, you get negative 17, getting closer. Both these numbers are negative. Uh, when you add them, you get negative 13, getting closer. Both these numbers are negative. This is negative 11. Hmm. So what does that inform us as far as math? None of these sets of factors work. What that tells us mathematically is that this trinomial, this quadratic trinomial, cannot be factored into a um, multiplication problem. I can't, I can't factor it. I can't make it a multiplication problem, at least not with real numbers, etc. So what we call that is prime. 
that factor sum chart did not produce what we needed. We're done. You can move on, go to the next problem. It's kind of a little gift. You don't have to do the factor by grouping on that one. Okay. okay. And I wanted to go back and connect to that first problem. Um, let me go back to, not that first problem, but on the first page, pardon me. If I go back to that first page real quick, okay. When I mentioned this problem up here when we were finding a GCF, I said, this really requires further, we took out the GCF, this requires further investigation. This is a quadratic trinomial, does it factor? And I didn't discuss it then because we hadn't learned the content. So, but now that we've learned the content, let's go back to this, okay? So I took the GCF out and I really need to see if this quadratic trinomial will factor. Well, studying this quadratic trinomial, I see A is one, it should be an easy, um, easy factor. So all I'm gonna to have to do is build my factor sum chart. So A is one, and you can just watch or you can write it. B is negative two and C is positive three. So multiply A times C, get positive three, use the B value, negative two. So A times C and B. Factors of three are just one and three. Okay. So, um, to get a positive three, both of these numbers either have to be positive or both these numbers have to be negative. Well, because I'm looking for a negative two, it tells me that both these numbers have to be negative. Well, this product is positive three, but when you sum these, you get negative four. Negative four is not negative two, so if your factor sum chart does not produce what you need, then that tells you and informs you that this quadratic trinomial is prime. It doesn't need to be factored any further. So I wanted to connect back to that one, uh, just kind of piggyback on this one that we did here where we had a prime quadratic trinomial. Okay, we'll do this one and then I'll leave this one for you guys to do on your own or you can consult the key if you get stuck on that one. All right, so we're gonna factor this quadratic trinomial. Um, first thing we should be doing is always looking for a GCF. So I see that three terms that I have here, two, four, and 16, Okay, with those numbers involved in those terms, okay, I can factor out a two. When I divide out a two, it's making these numbers easier to work with. Now, just like the last problem I connected to, I have to do further investigation to see if this quadratic trinomial that's left in this parentheses is factorable or maybe it's prime, but I have to at least run it through the test to see if it does factor further. So that's what I'm gonna do next. It's just an easy factor because A is one. Now, having said all that, what if you didn't notice that there was a common factor and you didn't take out the two? Could I just use the strategy that I've you know, learned about when A is greater than one to factor this? Yep, will you get the same answer? Yep. All right, well, I've made these numbers smaller by dividing out a two, factoring out a two. So now I'm just gonna focus on this quadratic trinomial. I'm gonna build a factor sum chart I'm going to call a1, b negative 2, and c negative 8. Factors of a times c, which is negative 8, that have to sum to negative 2. So don't worry about the negative, just generate the sets of factors for positive 8. 1, 8, 2, 4, and that's it. Now go back and look, oh, I need a negative 8, so one of the two of these numbers has to be negative and I want the sum to be a negative number. Well, if I'm adding two numbers, <clears throat> let's make the bigger number the negative number, so when I sum these, I get a negative value here. So let's make eight negative. That product is negative eight. Negative eight plus one is negative seven. Not what we need. Let's make the four negative now, because the sum here would give us the negative two. So these are the factors right here that we want. So I've pulled the two out. It's still part of my answer. It's still part of the multiplication problem. But now I'm gonna break this quadratic trinomial, like in our first few problems, into a binomial times a binomial. I do not have to do factor by grouping. That's the benefit sometimes of looking for a GCF. You kind of stumble on and make yourself have an easy case. So all that's left to do, no factor by grouping, is to slip these factors in the parentheses. So now my multiplication problem has three factors. It has the number two, and it has these two binomials. 
And that's our answer. All right. All right, we're going to move on. Uh, we're still going to be factoring, but we're going to factor with special patterns. So looking at problem 13, it says we're going to consider now not a quadratic trinomial, but um, a difference of two squares. So I'm going to kind of cover up this formula for a minute. What if we don't have a quadratic trinomial? What if we have just two terms, but when we investigate those two terms in our problem, okay, each of those terms um, are a square of a, a, another quantity. So we've got three examples here. Notice that this is quadratic, but it's not a trinomial. It's a quadratic binomial. This is a quadratic binomial. This is a quartic, fourth degree, okay, um, binomial. Okay, each of these three examples fit this special case of a difference, not a sum, difference, not a sum, of two squares. And if I can identify in that problem that I'm trying to factor, make a multiplication problem with, if I can identify that I have um, two square terms, uh, then, then uh, the factoring is pretty easy. I can use this formula. All right, the first thing I go, oh, well, that's not a quadratic trinomial, so I can't use the factoring techniques that I've just seen. Uh, but I can see that this x squared can be rewritten as parentheses x squared minus, what do I square to get 25? Well, I square 5. So let's kind of come over here and, and look at this, this expression, and then we'll come back and talk about the factoring. Okay, is there something I can square to get multiply by itself? to get 4x squared. Well, yeah, if I took 2x and I squared that, I would get back to 4x squared. Have the minus, because we're doing difference. This does not work for a sum. Okay, nine. Well, is there a number you can square to get nine? Yep, I can square three to get nine. All right, what about this um, expression? Well, if I took x squared and I squared it, I'd be multiplying the exponents and getting back to x to the fourth, and then 9 can be squared, and it results in 81. All right, so this is kind of like by inspection. It's an eyeball test. It's like, oh, okay, well, are there squares there? And I see a minus, because if, if that's the case, I can factor it using this little formula. All right, so now let me go into each of the problems. So for this problem right here, okay, I want to know that um, this x value right here is going to be, um, in this formula, is going to be designated as uppercase A. So A is x. That's what I square to get x squared up here in this problem. So what's uppercase B? Well, uppercase B is what I square to get B squared, so B must be 5. I might as well go ahead and do the same thing over here and designate A and B. We tackle three problems at one time. So A represents what you can square to get the first term. So what I can square is 2x, and B represents what I can square to get the last term, the second term, so that's 3. In this last example, A is x squared, and B is 9. Okay, now we're ready to look in uh, at the formula. It's saying if we have a difference of two squares, I can factor it, make a multiplication problem by using um, two binomials, to multiply together. So I'm going to go ahead and get those all set up. This formula says in one of the parentheses, and it doesn't matter if it's the first one or the second one, I'm going to take what I've decided A and B are and add them, um, find the sum of those, and then in the second parentheses I'm going to take A and B and subtract them, find the difference. So this is the sum and difference of two like terms. We had seen the, the multiplication of this in a previous lesson, but we didn't go um, from this uh, perspective back to this multiplication problem. We were actually taking sum and difference of two like terms and multiplying them and ending up with this type of answer. But now we're going back this way and making um, our expression a multiplication problem. So what goes in the upfront parentheses? Well, a plus b, but in this case, our a and b are x and 5 and then x minus 5. Neither one of these parentheses can be factored even further, so we're finished. So a difference of two squares factors into the sum and difference, plus and minus, of two like terms. 
Likewise here. A plus B and A minus B. Again, you could do A minus B and then A plus B, it doesn't matter. Here we have X squared plus nine and we have X squared minus nine. And before we box this though, um, we need to inspect this parenthesis, not the sum of two squares, not a sum of two squares, but look, we have another difference of two squares. So in this last parenthesis binomial, if I let a be x and I squared it, I'd get x squared. If I let b be three and squared it, I'd get nine. So we've got to take this binomial and break it apart into a multiplication problem that consists of a plus b and a minus b. So as part of our answer, we're not going to do, we can't do anything further with x squared plus nine. Okay, but I can take this x squared minus nine and make it x plus three and x minus three. I bet that's commonly missed because we do it once and we think we're done, but we always got to go back and check to see if there's more factoring that needs to take place. All right, the last topic in these notes is going to be the sum or difference of cubes. Now compare and contrast up here. When I had squares, I could only factor it by the difference. But if I have cubes, um, I can factor if I have a sum or difference of cubes. So we've got two formulas depending upon if we have a sum of two cubes or a difference of two cubes. All right, and all of these examples right here contain either a sum, plus, or minus of two cubes. So it follows the same kind of pattern as what's up here. First thing I would do is I'd look at this and go, oh, well, I can't factor like earlier. You know, uh, it's not a difference of two squares. I don't see squares, but it might be a sum of two cubes. So you could rewrite this as x to the third plus one to the third. That way I can see that a is x and b is one. a is what you cube to get x cubed and b is what you cube to get one. So now it's like, how do I factor this? Well, which of the two formulas does this best fit? Well, it's this top one. So this is what we're gonna break up this um, expression into. A product of a binomial, I'm gonna get it ready, the answer's getting ready. I have a binomial, two terms, times a trinomial. So let's follow the pattern. In the binomial, I wanna add a and b, easy enough, x plus one. The first term of the trinomial is the square of the, the, of the a value. So let's use x and let's square it. So I'm just gonna square this x and get x squared. In this formula, then my middle term is going to be subtraction of the product of a and b, or that's just going to be minus x. And my last term here, b squared, comes from taking b, which is 1, there's a plus sign here, and squaring it, and just getting 1. So we're just applying this formula. So you might be thinking, do I have to memorize those formulas? No, 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 I'll give them to you. No worries. Uh, upon further inspection right here, this is going to be a prime quadratic trinomial. If we tried to do a factor sum chart on this, we would not find factors of AC that add to negative 1. So, but I did want to at least mention that, that I did test that, and that quadratic trinomial in the second parentheses does not factor further. Okay, if you're comfortable, remember, stop the video at any time if you're comfortable. It's always best if you go ahead and attempt a problem. If you make a mistake, who cares? Go back and change it, but there's more learning that takes place when you attempt something. All right, I think I'll just go down and do x cubed minus 25 here. Uh, that's a difference. It doesn't. Get, it's not going to be a difference of two squares, but maybe it's a difference of two cubes. How do I know? Can I rewrite each of these two terms as the cube of something? And yes, I can. So a is x and b is 5. I'm ready to apply the formula, oops. So a difference of two uh, cubes factors into a binomial times a trinomial. In the binomial, we're gonna do a minus b, x minus five. The first term of the trinomial is gonna be x squared. The second term is positive, and it's the product of a and b, or five x. And the last term is plus the square of b, or 5, which is 25. 
And again, like in the previous example, I went ahead and just yeah, tested this, but um, for uh, to see if this quadratic trinomial factors, and it doesn't. You can try with the factor sum chart, okay, but it fails. Okay, I think I'll do one more, leave the other two for you. Um, I think I'll do this last one here. All right, I wanna factor this, make it a multiplication problem. It looks like by inspection, it might be a difference of two cubes, but can I find um, A and B values that cube to give me these two terms? Well, if I put a two X here and I cube this, I would get two cubed or eight. This is not six, this is eight. Two times two times two is eight, eight X cubed. And then three cubed would give us, give us 27. So in this case, A is 2x and B is 3. It's a difference of two cubes, so I'm going to use this bottom formula here. So go ahead and set up your binomial and your trinomial. So your binomial will be 2x minus 3. The binomial has the same sign as the problem. Uh, the first term is squaring A, so that would be not 2x squared, but 4x squared. I'm going to multiply 2x by itself. The middle term is plus the product of these two, so that'd be 6x, and the last term is always plus, and it's the square of 3 or 9. And again, I went ahead and checked that 36 does not have factors that sum to 6, so this quadratic trinomial is also prime, so we don't have to factor any further. So uh, the key that's attached will have the worked out solutions for these other, these, the, uh, these other two. So if you want to check it, that'd be great. I'm also going to make another video with some more practice problems of factoring. If you're, depending upon your level of comfort with this topic, you may or may not want to watch that video. If you're feeling a little uncomfortable, um, it will also be attached. I think there's five or six more additional factoring problems um, to kind of help you through this.